योग वशिष्ठा बाय सेज वाल्मीकि वॉल्यूम वन बुक टू इज बीइंग कंटिन्यूड बुक टू इज मुमुक्षु खंडा चैप्टर टेन डिसेंशन ऑफ नॉलेज वशिष्ठा रिज्यूम्ड दिस थिंग कॉल्ड डेस्टिनी इज एज ट्रू एज द रियलिटी ऑफ गॉड इट इज द कॉज ऑफ कॉजेस एंड इफेक्ट ऑफ इफेक्ट्स इट इज एन एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ गॉड नाउ अटेंड टू माई वर्ड्स एंड डिपेंड ऑन योर एग्जर्शंस and intently apply your ever confident mind to the attainment of your chief good try your exertions to turn to your subjection the misleading senses from pursuing their objects i will now propound to you a code containing the essence of the best means of liberation which will confer the fruits of your exertion and lead you to your welfare in both worlds let them have let them that have great minds forsake their worldly desires in order to avoid their future births and attend to these lectures with calm contentment in their minds way well <coughs> way well the meanings of the antecedent and subsequent propos- propositions repress your mind from its worldly cares and dispose your self to equanimity for its inquiry after truth hear me relate to you rama the way to emancipation which will remove your feelings of feelings of pain and pleasure and become the surest means to lead you to supreme happiness on hearing this lecture on liberation in the company of all those reasonable men you will know that highest state which is free from pain and of which there is no termination this was spoken of old in a former kalpa age by brahma abiding in the supreme spirit it is the remover of all anxiety and giver of all comfort to the soul rama asked say o brahman that art my guide what cause moved brahman moved brahma himself of old to reveal this knowledge and in what manner was it obtained by you vashishta replied the supreme soul of infinite manifestations exists by itself it passes through and supports the whole in the form of vacuity and understanding and as light to all living beings from him who remains the same unaltered being in his rest and motion the great vishnu was born like a moving wave on the quiet waters of the sea then was brahma produced from the lotus of his heart having the mount meru for its pericarp and the points of the compass for its petals and the stars for its pistols he being beset by gods and sages acquainted with the vedas and their signification significations created all the worlds and the minds with their various thoughts he then created the groups of men in the Bharata division in a corner of Jambu Dwipa Asia and subjected to them to subjected them to all manner of diseases and afflictions they are all troubled with the possession and want of many things and their subjection to dangers and diseases here all species of created beings are subjected to a variety of tribulations and afflictions the lord and creator of worlds seeing the misery of these people felt compassion for them as a father does for his children he then pondered within himself for a moment with intensity of thought and for the good of all creatures how to exterminate the misery of these beings who were subjected to death and despair with this thought the lord god brahma established himself the rules of austerity piety charity veracity and pilgrimage having established these the lord and creator again thought within himself how to make an end of the many miseries of the men he had created he thought upon self extinction as the supreme bliss which was which was obtainable only through a knowledge of the deity and whereby man might be exempted from repeated births and deaths it was divine knowledge he thought the only means of men's crossing over the ocean of this world but austerity charity and pilgrimage were no means to it but mere preparatives to knowledge 
Upon this said he, I will immediately make a new and sure bridge for the salvation of men and for their liberation from pain. Having thought so, the Lord Brahma, sitting on the lotus, meditated in his mind and produced me from himself. Being thus produced, I stood for, forthwith in the presence of my progenitor as a wave rising from the sea lanes towards it. I then bowed down to the God who held a water pot in one hand and a rosary in the other with a pitcher and a bead of seeds in my either hand and was thus addressed by him. Come, my son, he said, and then holding me with his hand, made me sit on the northern petal of his lotus of truth which shone as bright as the moon emits the silvery clouds. Wearing the skin of an antelope, Brahma, my father, spoke to me who was in the like habit, with the voice of a gander addressing to addressing a stork, that is a talkative person addressing a mute one. He said, I will for a moment overpower thy fickle-mindedness under a mist of insensibility as a dark cloud overshadows the disk of the moon. It was under this imprecation that I lost my reason and forgot everything, even the clear idea I had of God. I then became as helpless as one out of his wits and came to be afflicted with distress and sorrow like an indigent person. Ah, woeful is this world, said I, and how came evil to dwell how came how come evil to dwell in it with these thoughts i remained in silence pondering on the origin of evil then he my father spoke to me saying ah my son why art thou so afflicted ask of me the remedy for thy affliction and thou shalt become happy then the create the lord creator of all peoples was asked by me seated as i had been on the gold colored leaflets of the lotus asked the medicine of the worldly vows how came how come said i o my lord this world be so full of misery and how can people get rid of it is what i ask of thee to know i then learnt the most holy wisdom which brahma my father delivered to me and following his advice i became quite composed in my mind then the creator of the world and revealer of all causes Seeing me, knowing the knowable and restored to my own natural state, said, I have turned thee to insanity, my son, by an illusion in order to make thee an inquirer into the essence of true knowledge for the welfare of mankind. Now art thou released from the curse of illusion and arrived to thy highest state of understanding. Thou hast become as one soul with the supreme and art as pure gold, after its purification from dross, now shut thy heart against the world and proceed to the land of Bharata on the surface of the earth for the good of mankind. There employ thine to ceremonial duties to the best of their knowledge, thy knowledge and advise others to ritual acts in their proper order. But such as, but such as are disgusted with the world in their hearts, and are rational with their elevated understandings are to be counselled to esoteric knowledge which confers true felicity to man. Being thus appointed by him who was born in the lotus, I continue to abide here in their thought here in throughout the succession of beings, that is for ages. I have no duty to perform here, but live while I have to live free from all cares. I do my acts always with as tranquil a mind as it were in the state of sleep. I do my works with the body, but I do nothing here with my soul which is fixed in God. Ch chapter 11 On the qualifications of the inquirer and lecturer, Vashishtha continued, I have thus related to you fully about the descent of knowledge on earth with the reason of my birth and the intention of the lotus-born Brahma in making me his apostle. Now, Rama, as you are eager to learn the transcendental knowledge and feel so great an anxiety for it in your mind, it must be the effect of your pristine merit. 
Rama said, How was it, sir, that the Supreme Lord felt a desire to send down knowledge on earth after his creation of it and not along with it? Vashishta replied, This Brahma is in his own nature the same with the Supreme Brahman and is born in him, as a billow is born of the waters of the deep. This great Lord saw the imperfections of his creation and saw its whole course at one view in times past, present and future, the perversion of mankind subsequent to their fall. He saw the decay of ceremonial rites after the end of the Satya Golden and other ages and considering the error to which men were to fall afterwards, he felt pity for their states, for want of sacrifices. Then the Lord thought of endowing me with true knowledge and sent me on the surface of the earth for dispelling the ignorance of mankind. Let me be, let me, he has sent also some other great, like me, he has sent also some other great saint, sages here, as Sanat Sanat Kumara, Narada and many others also. He has sent them all for the redemption of mankind from the fetters of their ignorance by a series of meritorious acts and their progress in divine knowledge also. These great sages, seeing at the end of the past, Golden Age, the gradual decay of the holy ritualistic rites on earth. They created the rulers of earth at different divisions of the land for regulating the courses of duties and observing their proper limits of action. They have made many works on the traditional law of sacrificial rules to be observed on earth and many appropriate provisions for the accomplishment of religious and temporal duties in the Smritis. But in the revolution of time, all these duties became slack in their course and men have no other thought except that of seeking their daily maintenance. Everyday disputes are rising among the landowners on account of their estates and properties and the people are subjected to various penalties in large numbers. In such a state, it is not possible for the rulers to rule over their states without fighting with one another when they with their subjects are inevitably reduced to wretchedness by warfare. In order to remove the importance of such princes and to lead them to a comprehensive view of things, we have prescribed to them many excellent precepts of knowledge. It was the spiritual knowledge which had been at first propounded to princes, but it came afterwards to be known under the title of royal science polity. Their, their royal science is of a recondite nature and is also the best kind of spiritual knowledge. Many kings have been set beyond the reach of calamity by a knowledge of this science. It is after many such fair famed princesses that have gone by that your mighty self was begotten by the present king Dasharatha. O slayer of your enemies, I find a very agreeable and holy kind of apathy growing spontaneously in your most clear understanding. There is another kind of cold-heartedness, O Rama, which is caused by some sorrow in the minds of the virtuous and reasonable mind that is styled their causal indifference. But your unprecedented and astonishing apathy which is produced without any cause and by your reason only is called real stoicism by the wise. Seeing the obnoxiousness of worldly things, what man will not grow averse to them? The best displacency to them is what arises in the mind of one from his own judgment. They are reckoned as great men and greatly wise also, whose indifference springs without any cause of detention of the world and whose minds are clear of all gloomy thoughts. One whose mind feels a disgust to the world from its own judgment and nice discrimination of things is as graceful to see as the youthful bridegroom adorned with chaplets of flowers. They are esteemed as the best of men who betake themselves to indifference after judicious consideration of the worldly troubles. It must be by one's repeated and judicial, judicious examination of the inward and outward illusions of this world that he should forcibly withdraw himself from them. 
who is there that feels not an aversion to worldliness at the doleful sight of a funeral event it is that aversion however which is born of itself that is highly commendable i see you are sincerely indifferent and in reaching the acme of true greatness you are worthy of the best knowledge as is the moist earth of receiving the seeds it is by the grace of lord god and supreme spirit that a lucky understanding like yours naturally inclines to reason it is by performance of ritual duties and observance of the prescribed duties that the demerits of former births are expunged upon expurgation of former demerits the understanding turns of itself to take cognizance of spiritual matters like the simultaneous flight of the crow towards the falling fruit of the palm but those that are devoted only to ritual acts are like persons plunged in an eddy wherein they are whirled up and down until they come to perceive the state of supreme seeing this illusory state of the world a man must shake off the delusion of his worldly mindedness just as the elephant breaks loose from his fetters it is too intricate o rama to understand the course of this boundless world and not even the greatest of embodied beings as man can know it without true knowledge no o support of raghu's race that men of great understanding have got over the unformidable ocean of the world by means of the raft of their knowledge and reason now hear with attention and steadiness of your mind this rational knowledge for your deliverance from the flood of this world the unceasing excitement of the senses and the fears and miseries of the world will continually disturb the mind without the remedy of right reason there is not beside rational knowledge that can enable holy men to endure the afflictions of the opposite extremes of of heat and cold and wind and rain the incessant cares and miseries which befall to men at every step serve sometimes to torment the ignorant mind as a flame of fire as a flame of fire burns away the straw but the troubles of this world cannot afflict the wise man who knows the knowable and discerns all things in their true light just as it is impossible for the flame of fire to burn down a wood drenched by the rains the man knowing the truth resembles the firm arbor of the oak kalpa with no withstand of disease no with no whirlwind of disease or distress raised by the hot winds of this desert of the world has the power to upset the intelligent man who has a mind to know the truth must diligently serve his wise preceptor with loving regard the saying of the well minded preceptor who is asked about anything must be carefully perceived uh, must be carefully preserved in the mind as a piece of fine muslin receives the dye with which it is dyed o best of the eloquent you must not receive the instruction of one unacquainted with truth himself whoever asks him anything is the greatest of fools whoever does not carefully attend to the words of the truth telling preceptor who is asked about anything is the basest of men it is the best inquirer who makes his inquiry of one after ascertaining by his deeds whether he knows the noble or not but he is reckoned a vile inquirer and incapable of knowing great things who makes a boyish query without ascertaining the lecturer's qualifications the wise man when asked will reply to him who is able to comprehend the anti antecedent and subsequent propositions and is possessed of a good understanding but he should make no answer to a vile brutish being the preceptor who gives his lecture without examining the capacity of the inquirer to grasp his meaning is pronounced unwise by the learned o diligent of raghu's race this our meeting is a very congenial one and well adapted to each other wherein you are inquirer as an admirer of virtue and i the speaker am well acquainted with the subject you that understand the meaning of words should well consider all that i tell you and take them to your heart you are truly great and 
disgusted with the world and know the truth among mankind whatever is spoken to you must be impressed in your mind as the red dye on muslin you by your attention to what i say and discrimination of spiritual matters can make your understanding receive my instruction as the waters reflect the sunlight receive all that i say and store them diligently in your mind or else it is useless to ask me anything the mind o rama is as fickle as an ape in the forest correct it carefully and attend attend to spiritual instruction keep yourself always from the injudicious and ignorant and those addicted to the company of wicked people and honor the virtuous it is by association with good people that we can gain wisdom which resembles a tree yielding the fruit both of enjoyment and liberation that is both of worldly and future good there are four guards said to keep watch at the gate of liberation namely peace judgment contentment and the society of the good all these are all these or three or two of them are to be attended with care because they shall open to you the door leading to the abode of liberation or at least one of them is to be resorted to with diligence and even at the expense of one's life because by securing one of these a man can reconcile and gain all the four to his favor the wise man is the receptacle of all shastras and shrutis of all knowledge and austerity and is a gem on earth as the sun is the receptacle of light and gem of heaven the dull understanding of the senseless man becomes as stiff as a motionless block and like the frozen water becoming as hard as stone your good nature and good qualities o rama and the counsels of the learned in the shastras have made you sit here with a heart blue blooming like lotus at the rising sun you are lifted ears to hear these wise lectures have enabled you to repress your thoughts as the music of the flute attracts the mind of the deer now secure o rama the treasures of peace and good nature by your practice of indifference of which there is no decay your knowledge of the attainment of liberation will be increased by your attending to the shastras and the society of good men as also by your practice of austerity and self subjection you must know that it is the study of divine knowledge with a clear understanding that is a sure remedy against ignorance know this world to be a poisonous plant and a seat of danger it inflicts the ignorant at all times unless one will take the you must know that it is the study of divine knowledge with a clear understanding that is a sure remedy against ignorance know this world to be a poisonous plant and seat of dangers it infects the ignorance at all times unless one will take the pains to dispel his darkness avarice accompanied by ignorance moves within the heart in a serpentine course and expands and contracts it by turns like the bellows of a blacksmith the true light of things dawns only in the minds of the wise as the gentle moon appears to sight only in the clear and cloudless sky he is truly called a man who can judge the truth by the major and minor propositions whose mind is expanded and fraught with brilliant ingenuity rama the clear wisdom of your mind makes you shine as the full moon dispelling the darkness of the cloudless sky by her cooling and translucent beams to be continued sri ram jai ram jai jai ram